may the God of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened of what is the hope of his calling. And may the meditations of our heart be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Days ago, as I was meditating, there was a vision given unto me. And in that vision, there was a street which had many people on the street. And during the time when it was very crowded and a lot of people was on the street, there began to be some gunshots. And many fled. And as they fled, I saw the one who was holding the gun. And I started to flee and run. I took about three steps and I stopped. And the one who held the gun saw me as I stopped. And he came right to me. And as he came to me, brother, because everyone else ran, as he came to me, right to my face, and he pointed the weapon directly right here. And as he pointed the weapon directly right there, I began to close my eyes and these words came out of my mouth. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. And as I began to close my eyes, I heard the gun flicker. Click, 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 click. The gun could not go off. The weapon cannot be discharged. And there are things that happen in the dream or in the vision that I'm not permitted to say. But it resonated in me to have this unction to talk about today the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The power of the blood of Jesus has provided all we need to live a life of fellowship, redemption, healing, victory, protection. And it gives us a life of having authority over the enemy, the devil. And speaking of the blood of Jesus, I want to bring up two points today. The first point, let's turn to 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. The blood of Jesus. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. And it reads... But if we really are living and walking in the light, as he himself is in the light, talking about Christ Jesus, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, God's son cleanses, removes us from all sin and guilt keeps us clean from sin in all its forms and meditations. The first point I would like to bring up concerning the blood of Jesus Christ is 
the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins. This is imperative because without this scripture, without the blood of Jesus, there will be no remissions of sin. Our sins would not be forgiven because we're talking about sinning against the almighty, powerful, righteous, holy God. We're talking about sinning against the one who is pure in all his ways. Who is justified in what he does. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, there will be no cleansing of our sins. There will be no forgiving or washing of our unrighteousness. For the Bible says our righteousness is filthy rags before God. And it all started in Genesis. Well, before then, let's go back. It all started when iniquity was found in Satan's heart. When he thought that he can overthrow the most high God. And the thing that I am... Elated and, 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 and joyful about is the all-knowing God who knows all things before even was created. He knew that Satan will be will have iniquity in his heart before he even created him. But how wonderful and powerful God is that he's just he's not like man. That even though he knew iniquity will be found, he's still created. Why? Because in himself, there's no insecurity. There's no, there's no self-esteem issues in him. He knew he's the almighty, all-powerful God. He knew Satan will have iniquity in his heart before he created him. But Satan was overthrown and cast out. And as the earth and the heavens was created and the mandate from God was given to Adam, you can eat of every tree except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And as Satan came through the serpent to speak to Eve to cause Eve to see opposite of what God had commanded, they both ate of the fruit. And sin has entered into this world. There is a need for the blood of Jesus. They, I say to somebody today, there is a need for the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, man will be doomed to God's wrath. And the Bible says, fear not the one who can kill your flesh. But fear the one who can kill your spirit and your flesh. I'm talking about the almighty God. There is a need for the blood of Jesus Christ. Their eyes was open. Sin entered into this realm, this world called earth. Before then, Satan had that sin. But it was not until the mandate was given to Adam and Satan came through the serpent and Adam disobeyed, sin came into this earth. Again, there is the need of the blood of Jesus. Romans 5 and 19 says, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. 
so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. We're talking about the blood of Jesus. We're talking about the blood of Jesus. It says, moreover, the Lord entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Lord, we thank you for your blood. For where sin abounded, much more grace did much more abound. So we thank you, Lord, for your precious blood. By your precious blood, grace is more abounded than the sin that was entered by Adam. That is, sin hath reigned unto death. Even so might grace reign through righteousness until eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin had reigned unto death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through who? Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus, he cleanses our sins. He did it so that no matter what sin it is, once we are redeemed and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says, if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, truly or true to his own nature and promises. God's nature and promise is faithful and just. God's nature is faithfulness. In Revelation John saw a vision of the man coming out of the cloud on the white horse. And they called him faithful. So God in his nature is faithful. Let's call him by name. Jesus in his nature is faithful. Jesus in his nature is just. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and he is just and will forgive us of our sins. He will dismiss our lawlessness and he will continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, meaning everything not in conformity to his will, his thoughts, and his actions. So his blood will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As I stated a few minutes ago, our righteousness is as filthy, dirty, stinking, disgusting rags before God. That's what the blood cleanses us from. When we think we're holy, when we think we're righteous, when we think we're better than somebody else, he cleanses us from that unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus Christ. You know, sin against a holy and righteous God requires a holy and righteous sacrifice. You see, man cannot deliver man. There had to be somebody that's higher in thinking, higher in holiness and righteousness. They had to be higher, somebody higher that's above man. Not even angels was qualified. There only could be one. There only could be one. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. That is the person of Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. 
Man plus man equals man. But God plus man equals the God man who came into the flesh and shed his blood for you and I. The only one that was blemished, unblemished. The only one that was holy and righteous enough to cleanse us from our stinkiness, our dirtiness of sin and shame, condemnation and the wrath of God. Sin against the holy and righteous God requires a holy and righteous sacrifice. And Jesus was the only one who was holy and righteous of the sacrificial lamb to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, God made him, Christ Jesus, who had no, who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. Do you see that? That Jesus, who knew no sin, who is no sin, he became sin for us. Why? Because God knew that there's no one holy and righteous enough that if I don't come down and help this creation, they in trouble. He knew that if I don't assist and help this creation in whom I created in my image, there will be damnation and wrath. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So he who knew no sin became sin for us. There was an exchange. As he became this sin, he exchanged our life for his life. The Bible says God took us out of darkness in which Satan was our father in the time while we were in sin. But he took us from the power of darkness, the power of Satan. And he died and shed his blood and translated us and transferred us out of that darkness and imputed into us the marvelous light of the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus. That he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. That God quickened us together with Christ. He made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus on the right hand of the Father. Glory be to God, the blood of Jesus and the power of the blood. We are the righteousness of God because the blood of Jesus Christ. If it had not been for the blood, where would we be? The cleansing power of the blood. So you're watching me and you're hearing me and you're standing before me. Know that once you accept Jesus Christ the blood of Jesus applies to your life. He cleansed you. This thing is not only for a selected group of people. He died for all humanity. He thought about you when he died. He had you by name. God knew you. I don't know who I'm talking to you. He knew you by name when he died on the cross and shed his blood. No one was exempted. When he died, he died for all of God's creation and humanity, human beings he died for. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus is powerful. Is a powerful, freeing, protecting provision from God. The blood of Jesus is a powerful Freeing, 
protecting provision from God. The Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And we are free today because the Son of God, his name is Jesus, has made it so that we be free by the shedding of his blood. By one man's disobedience, sin entered. But by one man's obedience, many were made righteous. Point one was, in talking about the blood of Jesus, we're talking about the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. That... We are redeemed because of his blood that washed away our sins. That's why they call Jesus the blood of the lamb. He is the lamb, the unblemished lamb. The unblemished lamb in which in the Old Testament they had to sacrifice many bulls and goats and lambs. But in the new covenant, in which God says, I make this new covenant with you, yes. that my laws and my words will be in your heart, that he will write it on the tablet of your heart. And this new testament will be solidified by the death of one. You see, one has to die in order for the testament to be made true. In order for a will to be enacted, the one who wrote the will got to die first. And in order for this new testament, this new covenant to be enacted, there has to be the death of the testator. And while Jesus died that we, he may implement this new covenant with God, with us. He died for that purpose. And because he died for that purpose, we have the laws of God, the word of God written in our, in our hearts. By way of the Holy Ghost. That now the Holy Spirit now dwells in us. And our bodies is a temple of the Holy Ghost. This would not be so except through the blood of Jesus Christ. Who enacted the New Testament. In the Old Testament the Spirit of the Lord came upon. But in the New Testament the Spirit of the Lord is inside of us. For even the love of God was shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says it's not by might nor by power. It's by the Holy Spirit. By my spirit, says the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit who reveals for you who is not saved. He reveals who Jesus is. That you may know and come to know your creator in Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. We thank you for the cleansing power of your blood, Jesus. The second point that I want to bring up in dealing with the blood of Jesus is the blood of Jesus is our protection. The blood of Jesus is our protection. Let's Look at in Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. And it reads, The blood shall be for a token or a sign to you, Upon the doorpost of the houses where you are. That when I see the blood, this is God talking to Moses, giving instruction for the children of Israel. 
He said, the blood shall be for a token or a sign to you upon the doorposts of the houses where you are, that when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. In Exodus chapter 12, we see God called Moses to free his people. And as God has given Moses instructions, because the wrath of God has come upon the Egyptians at the time. And again, when God's wrath come, you better watch out. And he gives instructions to Moses that every household have to give an unblemished lamb. And they had to sacrifice the lamb, meaning to, to, to slay the lamb and to pour the blood in a cup. And that in the night that God said that I will come, he said every person of the household have to take a hyssop and dip it in the blood and wipe it on the doorpost. And he says, this is where we get 13 from, and the blood shall be a token assigned on the doorpost where you are of the houses. That when he, as he comes, as his wrath comes, when I see the blood, he said, I will pass over and no plague shall be upon you to destroy you. The blood of Jesus is our protection. As the lamb was sacrificed and the blood was put on the doorpost, so in the New Testament, the unblemished lamb of Jesus Christ, of God, which is Jesus Christ, was sacrificed in which his blood was shed for all of us. That we don't have to experience God's wrath because he is the ransom for our lives. He who knew no sin became sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God. And as God passed by, he said, when I see the blood, he said, I will pass over and that no plague can come to destroy you. When you wash in the blood of Jesus, you are freed from all sin, all sickness and disease. You are free from which, were, which your father was in the past, which is Satan. And now your father is God by way of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you wash in the blood of Jesus Christ, you become a new creature. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5, he said, all things are passed away. And behold, all things are new. That you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And that once we are in Christ and washed away in his blood, his blood is our protection. His blood is our protection. In the vision the gentleman came right to my face and pointed the gun right in the middle of my, my eyes and right above my nose. And as I began to close my eyes, I said the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is our protection. That we have the power once you Confess Jesus, we, you have the power to apply the blood of Jesus and his protection to your body, to yourself, to your home, to your property, to every ounce of your being. You have the ability and the power to apply the blood of Jesus. Because it is the blood of Jesus that washed away all of our sins. 
And now we are made whole in Christ. Now we are new creatures in Christ. The blood of Jesus stands strong against the power of the enemy. When I pleaded, when I, when I spoke and said the blood of Jesus, the weapon that was aimed at me could not function because the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. The enemy's power against you and I cannot stand against the blood of Jesus. I'm not sure who I'm talking to because he didn't reveal that, but I know this is for somebody. You're coming against something. Or oh, excuse me, something is coming against you. And you have the power, once you accept Jesus, you have the power to apply the blood of Jesus to whatever that situation is. Because the blood of Jesus is our protection. The blood of Christ Jesus protects us. It covers all of our sins and shortcomings from God's sight. The blood of Jesus is the premises for God's forgiveness, which satisfies the demands of justice when the laws of unrighteous or when the laws of righteousness is violated. The blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse and to purge all of our unrighteousness Behavior from us. Most of all, the blood of Christ is our life. And Jesus invites all of us to drink of his blood and partake of his body, which is his word. That we may live by him. The Bible says that when God sees us, he doesn't see us, but he sees his righteousness. And that's because he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father, for your son's blood, which cleanses us from all our sins and all of our unrighteousness. Thank you for your, your blood that protects us. That we can apply the blood of Jesus to our lives and to our homes and our families. To our ministries, to our, our callings and our purpose. We thank you that for the shedding of your blood, the son, your son's blood, we stand right before you. We thank you. These two points that the blood of Jesus is a cleansing power and the blood of Jesus is our protection cannot be manifested in your life until you do one thing. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourselves therefore to God. The blood of Jesus and all that applies to the blood of Jesus will not work for you except you first confess and submit to God. All of submitting to God has all to do with surrendering your life. Your entire life. Which means surrendering your spirit. Surrendering your soul. Surrendering your body. Surrendering your entire life has all to do with surrendering your spirit, surrendering your soul, surrendering your body. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the enemy, and he will flee from you. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23 says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray 
God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Surrender to God. And once you surrender to God, you can apply the blood of Jesus to your life. Because the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins and our unrighteousness. And the blood of Jesus is our protection. As we partake of this morning, this communion, those that stand before me, you may partake, you may get the, the bread, and you may get the juice. As we partake of this communion, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. But before we partake of this communion, 1 Corinthians 11, 28 says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Because Christ has shed his blood, and because he is our protection, every man must examine himself. The blood of Jesus was made so that you would have life and have it more abundantly. For the one who's watching who has not confessed Jesus, may you take this opportunity now to proclaim Jesus. And it's simple steps because God is simple. He just said in Romans 10 and 9 that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God, the Holy One, the Righteous One, has raised Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy One and Righteous One, from the dead, Thou art saved. It's all about confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and you are saved. When you confess this statement just now, the blood of Jesus was waiting for you and he already washed your sins away. Now be free in Christ Jesus. Now you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Whatever your past has been, it is now wiped away. You are a new creature. Your old was wiped away and passed over. And now your newness is here. God giving you a clean slate for you to start all over again. For somebody been battling for a long time, where do I start? How do I come out of it? Today is the day that you be freed because Jesus came to free the oppressed, to deliver the captives free, to heal the manner of sickness and disease. He is here right now. And when you confess your sins unto God and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you are free in Jesus' name and whom the Son sets free <coughs> is free indeed. You are free today when you confessed that he is Lord and Savior. <coughs> For the one who has confessed Jesus, but not has walked right before the Lord. <clears throat> As I stated earlier, the Bible says in <clears throat> 1 John that if we confess our sins, that God, Jesus, 
is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. <clears throat> if you in time past have confessed Jesus and you have not walked upright after you examine yourself and against the word of God and you know within yourself because the Holy Spirit convicted you to let you know that in these areas you have not stand right before the Lord, the opportunity to stand before the Lord is today and right now. Tomorrow is not promised to us. <clears throat> so think of not your thoughts on tomorrow, but today confess your sins, for he is faithful and he is just because that is his nature. His nature is faithfulness and his nature is being just and holy. And God will forgive you of your sins and he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He had you in mind when he thought about it and when he died on the cross and shed his blood for you. In Jesus' name. So now, for the one who didn't know and they confessed today, you know, the Bible says heaven rejoice over one that repented. The heavens is rejoicing right now because you have confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. God is delighted. He was waiting for you with open arms. And the one who confessed and, and was not walking right, ah, just like the prodigal son, the father waiting for you with open arms. He still loves you. He will always love you. He will always be with you. He said, behold, I will be with you even until the end of the world. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now that we have confessed, He said, do this in remembrance. Maybe when this, this live stream is over, you can go and get a piece of bread and some juice. If you don't got no juice, drink some water because it's not about what's in the cup. It's about your faith and what you believe in and doing it in remembrance of him, Christ Jesus, for shedding his blood. Get a piece of bread and some, some juice or some water and com take communion with God, meaning you remember God and honor God by his body, which is his word, and by the blood, which is the, the juice, which is representation of his blood. We partake in eating this bread, which is a representation of the word of God, may we partake. Hallelujah. We partake in drinking this juice, which is a representation of your blood, which is the life of God, in which he shed his blood for the remissions of sin. Because he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we be made the righteousness of God. That the blood of Jesus Christ is our life. May we partake in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the blood of Jesus being the cleansing power. We thank you for the blood of Jesus being our protection. Jesus, because of your precious blood, we surrender our entire life unto you. We surrender our spirit. We surrender our soul. And we surrender our body. In the precious blood and name of Jesus Christ today. Amen. May the meditations of our heart be acceptable unto you today.
In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.